Hey everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes 2 and today I'm going to show you how to make the Easton pullover. Isn't she gorgeous? This pullover features an oversized fit with a longer back and side slits as well as balloon sleeves and is available in sizes extra small through 5X. You can find the complete written pattern on my blog or get a PDF in my shop and there's also a full kit available with Lion Brand yarn. I'll put links to everything in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for our East End pullover, we are using Two of Wands and Lion Brand's Color Theory yarn, which is a new, amazingly soft, worsted weight yarn. I'm using the color Satellite for my pullover. Um, and if you look in the written pattern, you can find specific yardage for the size that you'll be making. You will also need at least a 28 inch long pair of circular needles. I recommend using circulars when making large projects like this. I find it a lot easier. You can either have two separate sets of circular needles that are 28 inches or you can use interchangeables like I am. So I have for my interchangeables you're going to need a US size 7 four and a half millimeter set of needles and then you will also need a size 11, which is eight millimeter needles. I know that these look huge to be using with worsted weight, but trust me, you're gonna want them and you're gonna need them because of the stitch that we're doing for the main body. It's a very tight stitch. So using these larger needles will get us the nice drape for our pullover and allow us to actually get in there and get the stitches made. You will also need two stitch markers and a pair of scissors and at the end you will need a tapestry needle for seaming and weaving in all of your ends. As always you can find the written pattern over on my blog and follow along there and to start make sure that you're following the size that you're making. I will be making a size 2x for my sample and I like to use a long tail cast on so I'm going to pull and bring a long tail of yarn out because I have a lot of stitches to put on my needle. Okay, and then I always start with a slip knot and we're starting out with our smaller needles, the size seven, four and a half millimeter needles. And like I said before, I have a 28 inch long cord on mine. Um, you might be able to go down a little bit or you can always go larger too, but 28 seem to be perfect for my size. And then I like to use the long tail cast on. If you have a different preferred method for casting on, feel free to use that as well. It's totally personal preference here. But I'm gonna go ahead and cast on for size 2X, I'm casting on 146 stitches. So we're going to be working the back panel first and we want to make sure that we have a multiple of four plus two. So take a look at the written pattern. Again, you can find the free version on my blog, or you can grab a PDF version that you can print out and follow along with that's in my shop. There's also a complete kit available with Lion Brand Yarn, which includes a PDF copy of the pattern. So go ahead and cast on the number of stitches needed for your size for the back panel and then I'll meet you back here and show you how to complete your ribbing. Okay so all of my stitches are cast on and now I'm ready to start my ribbing. So we're going to be doing a two by two ribbing starting with purls. So I'm going to purl two and then I'm gonna knit two. And then purl two. And then knit two. 
and we're just going to repeat this all the way across our row ending with two purl stitches so you'll start with two purls and end with two purls for this first row okay so i'm just going to keep doing this pattern repeat all the way across and then i'll meet you back here and show you how to work row two Okay, so we just finished row one, and for row two, we're going to do similar to the same thing, but instead of starting with purls this time, we're going to start with knit stitches. So we're going to knit two, and then purl two. And then knit two. and purl two. And just repeat that all the way across, ending with two knit stitches. Okay, so we're at the end of row two. Ending with two knit stitches and then we're going to turn and we're just going to repeat rows one and two for a total of 23 rows which means we will end on a row one repeat so once you have your ribbing complete I'll meet you back here and show you how to work the main body of our pullover Okay, so here I have finished working my 23 rows of two by two ribbing for the bottom of my back panel. And now we need to switch to our larger needles. And I'm gonna do that um, in two steps while working the first row of the main body of the back panel. So as you can see here, I'll be working my stitches off of my left needle since I have circular interchangeables, um, I'm gonna go ahead and change my right needle to the larger size, which is the eight millimeters. And I'm gonna be transferring the stitches onto this needle. So using the larger size and working off of the smaller needle. And then once I get to the end of the row, I'll change this needle to the larger size as well. If you are using two separate circular pairs of needles, you can go ahead and just start using your larger size needles and work the same, work it off of the smaller needle. So we'll have an even number of stitches and this main body pattern, it's like an alternate herringbone stitch. I find it a lot easier than traditional herringbone stitch, um, but it still does get pretty tight. So that's why we're going up such a huge amount in needle size. So to start, this is your right side row. And the first row of this repeat, it's a two row repeat. We are just going to knit the first stitch. Okay, and then the next stitch, we're going to slip off knitwise. Then we're gonna knit the next stitch. And then with our left needle, we're gonna pick up that slipped stitch and we're gonna pull it over the knit stitch. But before we finish, we're not gonna drop it off the needle yet. You can pull it all the way through if you want but then stick your right needle back through and we're gonna knit through the back loop. Okay, so you're gonna use two stitches for that step each time all the way across your row. So then again, slip one stitch knitwise, knit the next stitch, then take the slip stitch and bring it over 
the knit stitch and then knit it through the back loop before you drop it off. And just repeat that all the way across. So slip one, knit one, pick up your slipped stitch, pull it over the knit stitch, and then knit through the back loop of that slipped stitch and then drop it off. So you can kind of see how the stitches are gonna be slanting, those slipped stitches. That's what we wanna see. They're gonna be kind of slanting to the left. So then slip one, knit one, pull the slip stitch over the knit stitch, and then knit the slip stitch through the back loop. And like I said, we're just going to continue repeating that all the way across our row and then we'll have one stitch left at the end. So slip, knit, pull the slip stitch over the knit stitch, don't drop it off, instead knit through the back loop. So I'm going to go ahead and continue that until I have one stitch left. So here we are coming up to our last repeat. And we'll have one stitch left at the end and we will knit that stitch to finish up row one of the back main section of the pan. So now we can turn and since I'm working with circulars, I'm going to go ahead and change out my other needle to the larger size. And that first row is probably going to be the tightest row just because you are working off the smaller needles and all the next, all the following rows should be a lot easier to manage. Okay, so here we are. This is the wrong side of our work. And what we're going to be doing on the wrong side for row two, this is a two row repeat. So this is the second row. We're going to be working with two sets of stitches at a time. And so we are going to purl two together. So insert your right needle through two of the stitches. Wrap your yarn around and as if to purl. But before we slip these stitches off, we are going to take our right needle and go back through the first stitch. Yarn over again and draw through like we're purling again so that we have two stitches on our right needle, and then we can slide those two stitches off the left. And we're just gonna do that all the way across. So insert your hook into two stitches, yarn over as if to purl, pull up a loop, then insert your needle through the first stitch, yarn over as if to purl, get your loop ready, and then you can slide the two stitches off. So we're working with two stitches at a time, creating two purl stitches, one through both and one through the first. So insert through two as if to purl, but before slipping these stitches off, go back through the first stitch, purl again, and then you can slide those off. So we're just going to keep going all the way until the end and we will end with two stitches like we did at the beginning. So this is nice, easy, two row repeat to follow for the main body of our pullover. Okay, I'll show you one more time. 
insert between two stitches, yarn over zip to purl, insert through the first stitch, yarn over zip to purl, and then slide both stitches off. And a thing to remember when you're working this row, you can see that the previous row has grouped our stitches together. You can see them here. This is the slip stitch that we pulled over. So in this row, we want to work stitches, one stitch from each of those groups together. So our next two will be this one and the first stitch of the next group, and then the last stitch and the first stitch of the following group. So always make sure that you have one stitch from each group together as you go to make sure that you're keeping those diagonal lines going in the right direction and meet up in the front at the right place to create that little herringbone effect. So here you can see on the right side, our stitches of the previous row lean to the left. The stitches of this row are gonna lean to the right and make almost like a little V shape going across. So I'm just going to continue working my repeats all the way across this row. And then I'll work a few extra rows here just so you can see the pattern repeat and see what it's supposed to look like. But we're basically just going to be repeating rows one and two of the main body section um, until we get to the neckline shaping. And where you stop, like the number of rows that you need to make will vary depending on which size you're making. So make sure that you are following along with the written pattern so that you know how many rows you should be making for the main body of your back panel. All right, so I just finished up two more rows in our pattern repeat. And so you can start to see more of the herringbone pattern taking shape. Um, so again, like I said, we're now on the right side row. So I'm gonna repeat rows one and two um, until I've gotten to the appropriate height and row count for the size that I am making. So make sure that you check the pattern um, and I'll meet you back here once we're ready to shape the back neckline. Okay, so I just finished up my last row before neckline shaping for the back panel. And you'll notice that I have my stitch markers in place here. Again, this is gonna depend on what size you're making, it will depend on how and where you place your stitch markers. And then you might also notice that I have a yellow um, little line of yarn running through my worked or my live stitches. So I went ahead and placed, this is a lifeline. I like to put lifelines in before I start any kind of neck shaping, just in case the neck shaping is wonky or I wanna go back and change things um, or readjust. So if you find it helpful to put a lifeline in, I suggest doing one here. That way, if you need to rework your neckline or you're not happy with the width and you wanna adjust the final width of your neckline, you can easily do that without having to unwork your each stitch of it one at a time. You can just kind of frog back to this lifeline. All of your stitches will be on this little yellow strand of yarn instead of being just totally unworked. So to begin our neckline shaping, we're going to start on the right side of our back panel and we're going to work the first row across until we get to one stitch before our stitch marker. Now we are going to have to work our stitches slightly differently when we get to this marker so that we can try to keep our pattern going as best as possible. So let's go ahead and start the first row. Um, if you have a lifeline in place just note that this first row of neckline shaping might be a little tricky just because you gotta make sure that you're not picking up the lifeline on your stitches, you're only picking up the live stitches on your needle. So like we have in previous rows, this is a right side row. So we're going to knit the first stitch, slip the second stitch, 
knit the next stitch and then take that slip stitch and bring it over top of the knit stitch and then knit through the back loop there. And so we're just gonna follow our normal stitch pattern until we've gotten to one stitch before our stitch marker. So to this stitch, I'm just gonna work my normal pattern as I would. Okay, so here, these last two stitches before my marker are my slip one, knit one, and then when I take this slip stitch and come back over the knit stitch and then knit one through the back loop, before I let this stitch slide off, I need to add an extra stitch here in order to bind off the center stitches of my neckline. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to knit through the front one more stitch here just before my stitch marker. Okay, so now I can take my stitch marker off. Okay, so now we're gonna bind off the center stitches and we're gonna start by using this extra stitch that we made. So we're gonna keep with the pattern repeat. So we're going to slip the first stitch and then we're gonna take this extra stitch and bring it over the slip stitch to bind off. Then we're going to knit the next stitch, take our stitch to the right, slip it over the knit stitch, slip the next stitch, bind it off, knit the next stitch, bind it off, slip the next stitch, bind off. So we're gonna knit one, bind it off, slip one, bind it off. Knit one, bind it off, slip one, bind it off. Okay, and we're gonna be then eliminating these stitches in the center. We're gonna keep the right side of our back panel on our cord the whole time. And we're just gonna continue in this same manner until we hit our next stitch marker. And don't worry if your bind off looks a little wonky or anything because we're going to be picking stitches up again for the collar when we're done. So go ahead and continue binding off following our stitch pattern until you get to our last stitch marker. Okay, so we're almost to our stitch marker. Going to knit the next stitch, bind it off. And so now we've hit our stitch marker. I'm gonna remove my stitch marker and we're gonna bind off one more. So I'm gonna slip, bind off. And now this is gonna act as my slip stitch to start my pattern repeat again. So now we're going to knit the next stitch take this stitch, pretend it's our slip stitch, bring it over, knit through the back loop. That way we keep our pattern repeat going. So now we slip the next one, knit, and then bring that slip stitch over top of the knit stitch and knit through the back loop. And we're just going to follow our normal pattern repeat until we hit the end of the row where we'll have one stitch remaining and we'll just simply knit that stitch. Okay, so we've made it to the end of our row. 
I will knit the last stitch and then we have completed our initial bind off row. So here you can see we have the right side of our back panel, our bound off neckline stitches here, and then the left side of our back panel. So we're gonna continue on with the left side first while keeping the right side on our cord. And we're going to be decreasing along the neckline edge on the right side only. So for our next row, Turn it around here. Okay, so our next row is a purling row. So, oops, we're going to knit two together. And then before sliding the stitches off, we go back through the first one purl again. Oh, sorry. Purl two together. <laughs> My goodness. All right. So we purl two together. Don't slip the stitches off your left needle net yet. Instead, insert your right needle through the first one, purl again, and then slip them off. So we're going to be doing this all the way across until we have one stitch remaining. So just as we did for the main part of the body, except that we'll have one extra stitch at the end. Okay, so we've made it to the end of our row. We have one stitch left and we're just going to slip the stitch purlwise. And then we can turn our work. And then we are going to be decreasing by one on this side. Okay. So what we're going to do whoop, is here you can see the way that our normal pattern would be. This would be the slip stitch. This is the knit stitch, slip stitch, knit stitch. So to decrease by one, we're going to slip that stitch off knit the next and then pull that stitch over top and instead of knitting through the back loop here we're just going to go ahead and bind that off and then we continue on with our normal pattern repeat so slip one knit one pull the slip stitch over and knit through the back loop and then continue on slip one knit one pull the slip stitch over and knit through the back loop and repeat that all the way across. You'll have one stitch remaining and you're going to knit that last stitch. And we will have decreased by one. And then just as a little note, make sure that you are following along for your size. Again, I'm making the size 2X. So if you are not making the size 2X, make sure you're following the instructions for your size. They may be slightly different than what I'm showing here in the video, depending on the number of stitches that you have in your row. We just finished that row. We're going to turn. And now that we have an even number of stitches, we're just gonna work our next wrong side row same as we normally would. So we're going to purl two stitches together, but before we slip those stitches off, we insert our right needle into the first stitch and purl again. And we're going to do this all the way across. Okay, so now for our next row, working on the right side, we're going to be decreasing by two and then continuing our stitch pattern across. So if you look at our 
regular stitch pattern. This would be a knit stitch, slip stitch, knit slip stitch, slip stitch. So in order to decrease by two, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to knit that first stitch like normal and then slip the next stitch like normal but then we're going to bind off a stitch so we're going to take our knit stitch and pull it over our slip stitch our next stitch would be a knit stitch and then again we're going to bind it off using this next stitch so we've bound off two and now we can just go ahead and repeat our pattern repeat all the way across. So this is a slipped stitch and then we're going to knit. We're going to pull the slip stitch over, but knit through the back loop of that slip stitch before we take it all the way off. So then slip, knit, pull the slip stitch and knit through the back loop. And we're just going to work the rest of our row as we normally would ending with a knit stitch for our very last stitch. Okay, so we just reached the end of that row. We're going to turn. And since we decreased by two, we still have an even number of stitches. So we're just gonna go ahead and work our wrong side row, same as we always will, by purling two together. And then of course, not slipping those off until we go back through the first stitch and purl again. So just repeat this all the way across just as you normally would work a wrong side row. Okay, so we're on our last two stitches here. And then we can turn. And now we're just going to bind off on the right side using the same kind of technique that we used for the initial bind off of our neckline. So to show you again, we're gonna follow the stitch pattern like normal. So we're gonna knit the first stitch, slip the next, and then pull the knit stitch over top of the slip stitch to bind off, knit the next stitch, pull our slip stitch over, slip, bind off, knit, bind off, slip, bind off, knit, bind off, slip, bind off, knit, bind off. So just continue in that same manner until you have bound off all of the stitches on this left side of your back panel. Okay, so now we've gotten to the end of our row and I'm just gonna cut and leave a long tail for seaming. And we have finished the left-hand side of our back panel. So it'll look something like this. And then we here, we have our decrease rows, our bind off rows for the center. And then we still have my lifeline's getting in the way here. Um, 
we still have the right side of the back panel on our needles. So since we've already completed row one on the right side, we are going to start with row two, which is a wrong side row. So we're going to turn our work around and then slide our needles down here. And for the right side, we are actually going to be working our decreases on the wrong side because we always want to be working our decrease stitches along the neckline here at the very beginning of a row. So I'm going to take my yarn, leave a bit of a tail for seaming in, and we're just going to attach our yarn here while we work our next row. Okay, so decreasing on that side, this side is pretty simple due to the fact that our stitches are all going to be purl to get two together. Um, the only difference here is since we have an odd number, we're going to be decreasing, but this first stitch here should really be part of another set. So see how typically we would start with something like this and we would purl these two stitches together because we don't want to do the ones that are grouped together here. So if I were to purl these two together first and just purl them together and leave them, I'm going to be off count. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to purl the first stitch. I just kind of like to hold my tail end with my thumb. So purl the first stitch and then we're going to purl two together. And instead of going back through the first stitch and working another purl like we normally would, we want to decrease by one. So we're just going to slip those off. We've decreased by one and now we can go back in and finish up our row with our normal pattern repeat, which is purl two together. Oops curl two together, but don't take your stitches off. Take your right needle and insert it in the first stitch, purl again, and then we can slide our stitches off. And then just kind of tighten it up as you go, making sure that you don't lose this tail that you attach to the yarn with. So we're just gonna work that all the way across our row. Purl two together, purl through the first stitch then take the stitches off your left needle. So at the end of this row, you should have an even number of stitches. And we'll be ready to turn and do our next row. So just continue following our normal pattern repeat all the way to the end. Okay, so we've reached the end of our row. We're going to turn our work and now we'll be working a right side row. And since we now have an even number of stitches, we're just going to work a normal right side row, which starts with a knit stitch. Oh, let me get my yarn untangled here. Okay, so we start with a knit stitch. And then we slip, knit, take our slip stitch over top of our knit stitch and knit through the back loop. Slip, knit, pick up the slip stitch, knit through the back loop. So we're gonna do that all the way across, ending with a knit stitch in our last stitch of the row. I've gotten to my last stitch of this row. Now be careful because this is the row and the stitch that you joined. So it may be a little loose and you might have to kind of just tighten that up a little bit. Okay, and now we are ready to turn and work our next wrong side row, which again, we're gonna be decreasing at the beginning of this row and we're gonna be decreasing by two. So now that we're back on an even number of stitches, we have our normal, like 
we're lined up to do our normal pattern repeat for this row. It's very simple. We're gonna purl two together and we're gonna do that twice so that we decrease by two. So purl two together, slip them off, purl two together, slip them off. So now we can go back to our normal pattern repeat, purl two together, go back through the first one and purl again, then slip those stitches off. And we'll do this all the way to the end of this row. And we'll have decreased by two stitches. So now we're ready to work our next right side row and what we're going to do is we're going to work a normal right side row, a normal left side row, a wrong side row, and then we're going to bind off our stitches. Same as we did on the other side, we just want to make sure that we have the same number of rows on the left as we do on the right. So work two more normal stitches, a right side, normal rows, a right side row and a wrong side row. And then we'll go ahead and we'll bind off this row and we'll be ready to move on to the front panel. Okay, so I just got done with my last two regular rows and then I bound off the top of the right side. And so now I've got my nice neckline shaping here, which if it's a little bit bunchy or doesn't look 100% great, that's okay because we're going to be adding a little bit of a mock turtleneck to our pullover. So now that we've finished the back panel, it's time to move on to the front panel. For the front panel, you're going to repeat the instructions for the back panel. So you're going to repeat the ribbing just as we did before and then switch needles and get into our nice um, alternate, alternate herringbone stitch and you're just going to stop a few rows shorter than what you did for the back panel. So make sure that you're following along with the written pattern for your size. And once you have completed um, the beginning process again for your front panel, I'll meet you back here and I will show you how to do the neckline shaping for the front panel. Okay, so here I have repeated these steps, the initial ribbing section and the main body section, same as I did for the back panel, just with a few less rows at the end. So I'm just to the beginning of the neckline shaping for this front panel. So here you can see I have my stitch markers in place, marking off the area where I'm going to do my initial bind off. So that's the row that we're going to start with and it's going to be just like the back panel as far as how we're going to be doing it. So starting, this is going to be, when you wear it, this will be the left side of the sweater since it's the front panel. So our initial bind off row, we're going to start it just as we normally would for any other right side row. We're gonna knit the first stitch and then slip, knit, pull the slip stitch over and knit through the back loop. So we're just gonna continue to do this all the way until we are one stitch before our first stitch marker. So go ahead and knit until the stitch before the first stitch marker on yours as well. And then we will do our initial bind off of our neckline together. So I'm to the stitch just before, and this is a regular knit stitch. So then when I go to bring the slip stitch across, just like how we did in the front panel, I wanna make an extra stitch here. So I'm gonna knit through the back loop 
and then I'm gonna go and knit through the front as well. So I've made one extra stitch and we're gonna use that to bind off over here. So now I can take my stitch marker off. My next stitch is a slip stitch. So again, just like we did for the front, we're gonna follow the same kind of pattern. We're either gonna knit or slip our stitches before binding off. So I'm gonna slip this stitch, take that extra stitch I made and use that to bind off. Then I'm going to knit, take that slip stitch and use it to bind off. Slip, bind off, knit, bind off, slip, bind off, knit, bind off. And so here you can see that we are binding off our center stitches while keeping the left side of our front panel still on our cord. And then we're just going to continue to bind off just like this, slipping our slip stitches, knitting our knit stitches until we've reached the second stitch marker. And you'll notice that for the front, we are binding off in our initial bind off a few less stitches than we did before. So what's going to happen is we're going to have our neckline come down a little bit farther on the front panel than it does on the back. And you'll also notice that our front panel is going to be a little bit shorter then our back panel, that is on purpose. Our back panel, we want to kind of hit just underneath our, our butt and the front panel will hit kind of like right at the top of our thighs. Okay, so we've made it to our stitch marker. We're gonna remove that and then we're gonna bind off one more stitch. Okay, so now this is going to act as our slip stitch right here. And you can see that to follow our regular pattern, our next stitch is a knit stitch. So we're going to knit that stitch, take our slip stitch across and knit through the back loop. And then we can just repeat our normal right side row pattern all the way across. And this is the right side of our front panel. So just continue working all the way to the end of your row until you have one stitch remaining and then just knit that last stitch. Okay, so we've reached the end. We've just completed our initial bind off row. So now we are going to be turning and working a wrong side row and we're just going to continue until we finish this right side of our front panel. And we're gonna leave the left side stitches on our cord the whole time. Okay, so just how we normally would for a wrong side row, we're gonna purl two together. And 
And then before we slip the stitches off, we're gonna go back into the first stitch and purl again. And we're going to just repeat this all the way across. Um, you'll notice it's almost exactly the same as what we did for our back panel for the neckline. So we're gonna keep going all the way across. And since we have an odd number of stitches, we will have one extra stitch at the end of this row. So now we have our extra one here and we're just going to slip this stitch over purlized. Okay, and then we can turn our work and we're again on our right side row. And this row we're going to be decreasing by one. Oops, get my needles around this side. So what we're going to do is if you look at your stitches here, this would be a slip stitch and this would be a knit stitch. So we're just going to slip that first stitch off again, knit the next one, and then we're just gonna take it and use it and we're just gonna bind off. We're not going to knit through the back loop on that one. So we've decreased by one and now we can just continue our normal front facing row or right side row repeat. And then we'll just continue working our normal repeat all the way across until we have one stitch left and we will knit that last stitch. So just finished up that row and now for our, our next row, it's a wrong side row and since we now have an even amount of stitches, just go ahead and work a normal wrong side row using your uh, purl two together stitches. Okay, so I just finished up our wrong side row and we're on the right side again. So just like we did for the back panel, we're gonna be decreasing by two stitches this time so that we can keep our nice pattern repeat with an even number of stitches. So just like we did on the back panel, this first stitch would be a knit stitch and then we slip and then we're gonna take our knit stitch and pull it over and drop it, binding one off. Our next stitch would be a knit stitch, and then we'll take our slip stitch, pull it over, bind off, okay? So now this will act as our knit stitch at the beginning. We've bound off two already, and we can just continue in our normal pattern repeat on this right side row. I went ahead and did the wrong side row because it's just like our normal repeats. So from here on out, any purl side row, wrong side row, it's just going to be worked like we normally would. Okay, so now I'm on to our next right side row. Again, we are going to decrease by two here. This is our last set of decreases. So again, this first stitch here is a knit stitch. Slip it and then let's bind off one, knit the next one, bind off again, and then we can work our normal pattern repeat. So just how we did in our last right side row, decreasing by two, and then working our normal pattern repeat all the way across. So 
So go ahead and finish this row, work your next wrong side row, and I'll meet you back here and show you how to do the next row. Okay, so now that all of our decreasing is done, we just need to get our neckline to the right height. So I'm going to do a regular right side row repeat and a regular wrong side row repeat, and then we're gonna bind off. So go ahead and we're going to do, just work your normal right side row like you always would using our same pattern and another wrong side row. So add two just regular straight rows here and then we'll be ready to bind off. And then we can move on to the left side of our front panel. Okay, so now that I finished two more rows, a right side and a wrong side row, we are ready to bind off. And again, we're gonna do the same kind of thing that we did for our initial bind off and how we did it on the back panel. So knit your first stitch, slip your next, and then bind off. Knit the next one, bind off, and then slip bind off, knit, bind off, and just repeat this all the way across until you have bound off all of your stitches. Okay, so now that we've finished the right side of our front panel, we need to go back and finish the left side, which is still on our cord. So since we already did row one, which was our initial bind off, we're gonna start this side on the wrong side facing us. And just like how we did with the back panel, our decreases are now going to always be on the wrong side. Okay, so since we're starting with a purl row and um, we need to decrease by one, we're going to do this the same way that we did for our back panel. So I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail here for weaving in. Okay, and again, same as last time, we have an odd number of stitches this time. So we're going to start by purling the first stitch. Okay, and then we'll be ready to start our purl two togethers like we normally would, but for this first purl two together, since we wanna decrease by one on this side, we're just gonna purl them together and slip them both off. Then for the rest of the row, we're going to work as normal purling two together, but not slipping them off the left needle yet. We're gonna take our right needle, go back through the first stitch and purl again. And then just repeat that all the way across your row. So basically the front and back panel, the decreases are all going to be the same, but we're going to be working an extra row of decreases on the front panel just so that we get a lower neckline in the front. Okay, when we're done with this row, we will be back to having an even number of stitches for this side, the left side of our front panel. You'll always work the right side rows just how you normally would in the pattern, your normal pattern repeat for those rows. 
and on the back side, the wrong side, that's where we're going to be working the decreases, always along the neckline here. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this row. Okay. So our next row is a right side row and just you're going to work that row same as you normally would, knitting the first stitch, slipping the next, and then knit one, take your slip stitch, bring it over the knit stitch, and knit through the back loop. And we're just going to repeat all the way across, ending with a knit stitch in the last stitch. So know that on this side, all of your right facing rows, or I guess right side rows will be worked as normal. Okay, so just continue all the way across just as we normally would and then I'll show you how to work a double decrease on the wrong side. Okay, so now we're back on the wrong side and we want to work a double decrease. And since we have an even number of stitches again, it's very easy to do. Um, we're just going to purl two together and we're going to do that two times. So that was a one decrease, two decreases. Okay, and now we can just continue on as we normally would when we work this row with our purl two together and then insert your right needle through the first stitch again and purl again. And just repeat this all the way across the row and then go ahead and do your next right side row just as you normally would. And we will do another decrease row after that. Okay, so now we're back on the wrong side and we're gonna do a double decrease again, just as we did before. So purl two together twice, slipping both, <clears throat> both stitches off the needle instead of going back through the first one like we normally do. And then go ahead and continue our normal wrong side row pattern repeat where we work an extra purl stitch into that first stitch after our purl two together. And then after this row, we are going to work three to four more rows. I'm not exactly sure, but we're gonna just be working straight until we have the same number of rows as we do on the right side of our front panel and then we'll be ready to bind off. So yeah, this simple neckline shaping just will help give us more of an even smooth collar once we put the collar on, but it's fairly simple and easy to do and works well with our pattern stitch. Okay, so we're back on the right side. We're going to work four rows, just straight, no decreasing. So you'll do right side row, wrong side row, right side row, wrong side row, and then we'll be able to turn it over and we'll bind off just as we did on the other side. So go ahead and do four straight rows in our regular pattern and then bind off this side and we'll be ready to move on to the sleeves. Okay, so now that we finished the front and the back panel, I'm gonna lay them out with the right side facing up and I'm going to be seaming the shoulder seams. Um, you can use whatever method you prefer, but I'll go ahead and I will show you what method I prefer. But we're gonna be seaming just along the shoulders. They should match up stitch for stitch perfectly right here on both ends. Um, but I'm gonna show you how I like to seam my shoulders. Okay. So using one of the long tails at the end, 
I've put it onto a blunt tipped tapestry needle. And then, so I'm starting with, this is the back panel and this is the front. And I'm using the long tail from the back panel. So I just kind of start going in on the side of the front panel here, just to kind of attach them together a little bit. And then I like to go, you can see like our bind off stitches up here. I like to go kind of like in between two, like this, more on the front than like through the top of the stitches. And then I do the same thing on the opposite side. And that's gonna kind of like roll these stitches in and bring the edges together. So you will have a visible seam on the inside of your garment. So it helps to think like if I'm going down through the bind off stitch and then back up. So I'm kind of catching the front of my stitches. But again, you can use whichever seaming method you prefer. I just think that this gives it a nice clean finish. I know my stitch here is pretty loose on this side. But we just keep going back and forth from one side to the other, almost like a mattress stitch, but we're going kind of in between the stitches instead of into the stitches, if that makes, hopefully that makes some sense. If this is looking somewhat confusing to you, um, you can definitely check out some of my other knit videos where I do this same method. Um, on this type of stitch, it might look a little bit different versus when I do it on a stocking net stitch. Um, so you can always check out one that would show it on a stocking net stitch would be the Bexley pullover. It might be easier to kind of see like where I'm putting my needles. You're kind of just picking up basically like one leg from the stitch over here and one leg from the stitch over there. But on this particular stitch, it just looks a little, a little different, but you'll still see a slight seam here, but it'll be mostly invisible. So I'm just going to continue working Going back and forth from one side to the other, kind of just zigzagging across until I get to my neckline. And you'll see that, yes, you will have a visible seam on the inside because you're pulling your bound stitches in to the middle like this, kind of tucking them in.
Okay, so now that we've finished one side, we can go ahead and fasten off. We can save weaving in ends till the very last part. Um, kind of tighten that up a little bit. But this will give you a nice sturdy seam for on your shoulder. So I'm gonna go ahead and seam the other side and then we'll move on to the sleeves. And the reason why I do my shoulder seams first for this is because I wanna be able to put this on to make sure that my sleeves are fitting the way I want them to, um, which I will show you once we get the first sleeve done. So go ahead and seam the second side and then I'll meet you back here and show you how to work the sleeves. All right, so for our sleeves, we are back to the four and a half millimeter or size seven knitting needles on my circular cord. Um, and so we are going to be working the ribbed bottom. That'll be the cuff of your sleeve. And then again, switching over to our larger needles for the main part of our sleeve. So for the sleeves, depending on what size you are making, you are going to cast on um, a multiple of four stitches. So I again am making size 2X and my sleeves are going to start with 44 stitches casted on. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast on 44. Um, you can take a look at the measurements of the sleeves on the size chart in the written pattern. And you can easily, you can do a different sleeve size if you want. If you want a tighter or looser fitting sleeve, it's totally up to you. Um, so you're either going to start with 40, 44, or 48 stitches for your cuff. So go ahead and cast on the number of stitches needed for the size that you are making. And then I will meet you back here and go over how to do the ribbing. Okay, so now I have my stitches cast on for my sleeve. And then the sleeves are worked slightly different than the front and back bottom ribbing. Um, all the rows will be the same since we have a just a multiple of four. So I'm going to start by purling two. There's one and two. And then knitting two. And I just repeat that all the way across. So we're gonna purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, all the way across our row. And this time you will end with a knit two. Okay, so we're ending with a knit two. So now when we turn, we just repeat that row again, starting with purl two. So super easy, super simple. You're just gonna work the same row repeated. So purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, all the way across. And we're gonna do this for a total of 25 rows. So slightly longer than the back and front panel ribbing. Ooh, my cord's getting in the way. So just continue to work your two by two ribbing for a total of 25 rows. And then I will meet you back here and show you what to do next for your sleeves. All right, so I have done 25 rows of my two by two ribbing. Um, so now we are turned over to the right side of our work. And this next row, we're gonna keep our smaller needles on. 
And what we're going to be doing is increasing in every stitch. So like I said, I did 44 cast on stitches. I have 44 stitches on my needle. So we're going to be increasing, we're gonna double that. We're gonna go up to 88, okay? So make like the balloon sleeve. So for the increases, we are going to knit one in the front and the back of the stitch in every stitch across. So I knit and before I pull the stitch, slip it off of my left needle, I'm gonna go into the back of that same stitch and knit again. So I've made two stitches in one and then I can slip it off. Okay, and then the next stitch again, same thing. Stick your right needle into the stitch as if to knit, yarn over, drop your loop, but don't slide the needle off your left or slide the stitch off your left needle yet. You're gonna stick your right needle back into the back part of the same stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. Now you've made two in one stitch. Now you can slip it off. So you're just knitting front and back in every stitch. And that's going to give us twice as many stitches as what we started with. So just continue across the row, knitting front and back in each stitch all the way across. So here we are at our last stitch. Again, knitting one through the front and the back loop. Okay, and now we can turn our work. We are on the wrong side of our work. And this is where we wanna switch over to our larger needles. So I'm going to take my smaller needle off and I'll be working with the right needle being the larger sized needle because we're gonna be starting to go back into our um, alternate herringbone stitch. So I've switched to the eight millimeter needle. And then since we're on the wrong side, we need to do our purl row. So again, just as we did with the main body of our front and back panel, we're gonna insert our right needle through two stitches. And we're gonna purl those together, but we're not going to slip the stitches off. Before we slip those stitches off, we're gonna take our right needle and insert it just into the first stitch and purl again. And now we can slide both stitches off the needle. And we're just going to repeat that all the way across. And just know it can be a little bit tricky getting this larger needle into these stitches. But after this initial row, when we change fully to the larger size, it'll get a lot easier. So take your time. Try not to drop any of your stitches. I find that sometimes it can be easier if I pick up one and then the other instead of trying to go through two at the same exact time. And then just kind of using the tip of my right needle to go in. There go. So just repeat this step all the way across your row.
here's our last set of stitches. Okay, so we can turn. The right side is now facing us. So we're going to switch our other needle over to the larger size. And since we are on the right side again, um, just as we had done on our front and back panels, we will do the same kind of right side row. So this is our knitting row. We're going to knit the first stitch, slip the next, and then knit. Bring our slip stitch over top of our knit stitch and knit through the back loop. And repeat that. So slip one, knit one, take your slip stitch, bring it over and knit through the back. So just as we did on the front and back panels. And then following along with the written pattern, we're just going to work a repeat of those two rows, the purl two together row and then this row until we have reached the size required for our sleeve. And I'll also show you how to adjust the length of your sleeve so that you can get the perfect fit since not everybody's arms are the same length. Um, so follow along in the written pattern and work these two rows until you've gotten to the length required for your size. And then I will show you how to try it on to make sure that your sleeves are the right length. And then we'll be ready to move on to do the rest of the seam. Okay, so here I have it on. We've seamed the shoulders, and this is why I prefer to seam the shoulders before making my sleeves, because while I'm making the sleeves, even though I have a set number of rows for you to make, everybody's arms are slightly different, and they're going to be a little bit different depending on the size that you make. Um, the larger sizes, your drop shoulder is going to come down a little bit farther than the smaller sizes. So you can take your sleeve when you get finished or get close to being done with the rows that are recommended, leave them on your needle, and then just kind of hold it up in place like where you're going to be seaming it and see where it falls and make sure that it is hitting you in a spot that you like. Um, so right now I think I'm good here with where the sleeve will end. Um, the cuff is actually going to be somewhat tight and it will probably come up here like this, but I kind of like that to give the balloon sleeve a little bit more, you know, squishiness here at the bottom. So I think I'm good where I'm at. So now I'm ready to bind off, but this is a great way to kind of just get an idea of where your sleeve is going to hit. If your sleeve is, you know, super short, you know, you got to add more rows. If it's getting way too long, I, you can go back and take out some rows too. So it's easily adjustable. Um, that's why I have you seam the shoulders first and then test out the sleeve. Make sure that it is the length that you want. And once you're happy with it, make sure to write down exactly how many rows you actually did so that you make your second one the same as well. And then I will show you how to bind this off and we'll get ready for seaming it on to our sweater. Okay, so now that my sleeve is finished, I have it the length that I prefer. We are ending on a wrong side row. So when we turn, the right side will be facing us and we'll be ready to bind off. And again, just like how we've been binding off everything else, we will knit the first stitch, slip the next, 
and bind off, knit the next stitch, bind off, slip one, bind off, knit one, bind off. So again, following the same stitch pattern as before, only knit the stitches that you would normally knit and slip the stitches you would normally slip. And just continue to bind off your sleeve. So we're coming up to our last two stitches and we knit the last one and bind off. And here, um, the way that I like to seam my sleeves, I won't need a super long tail on this end because I work from the center out. So you can just fasten off leaving a normal size tail good enough for weaving in ends here. Okay, so now that we've had gotten one sleeve complete, go ahead and make your second sleeve and make sure that if you've adjusted the number of rows for your sleeve, that you keep track of how many and make both sleeves the same length. And then once you finish your second sleeve, I will meet you back here and we will seam them onto our sweater. Okay, so now that I have both sleeves done, I'm ready to attach them to the main body panels of our sweater. So here's one of our shoulder seams. The neckline is over here, and this is like the straight side edges. And I folded my sleeve in half in order to find the center. And then using a stitch marker, I've marked the center of my sleeve with this shoulder seam. And then what I like to do is take a tape measure, move this down here so you can see. And then I like to measure down the side and the sleeve and place another stitch marker. So like I said, I'm making the two X, my sleeves will be about 18 inches. So I want to kind of stretch my sleeve across so that I have nine inches from the center going down. And then I wanna do, make sure that I'm going nine inches from the shoulder seam down the side of our sweater. So making sure I kind of line that up and then I'll place another stitch marker going through the end of the sleeve and the side of the sweater just to hold it in place so I make sure that when I'm seaming it, I'm seaming it nine inches down the front and then nine inches down the back as well. So then on this side, again, we wanna mark out nine inches from the shoulder seam down the side of the sweater and place a stitch marker there as well. So once you have your sleeve pinned in place with your stitch markers, you want to take a separate long, like super long piece of yarn here because we're going to be starting in the center and working one way across and then the other way across. So. What I like to do is starting in this shoulder seam, working from the wrong side to the right side, I'm gonna pull up a long piece of yarn and I'm gonna basically keep half of my long yarn over here. We're gonna use this piece to seam this way and the other piece I'm gonna keep on my needle and we're gonna use it to seam this way. So I'm gonna seam this side first and this is how I prefer to do it, but if you have a different seaming method that you prefer, totally feel free to use whichever method you're most comfortable with. So I like to go through basically this center stitch here. 
much like we did when we seamed the shoulders. I'm not going like through the top of the bind off stitches. I'm going kind of in between them, almost like going through like the back post of my stitches. And I'm just going to zigzag across. So I can take this stitch marker out. So I just went through the sleeve and then for when I'm working on the side of the sweater, I just kind of go in and out along the edge. And then I go behind the next little post. On the sleeve. And then again into just like the edge here of the sweater, the main body of the sweater. And then in behind the next post of the next stitch down the sleeve. So somewhat like mattress stitch a little bit, um, but this is gonna give me a nice clean line for my seam. And I just try to eyeball it and make sure that I'm not moving down the side of the sweater quicker than I am picking up the stitches along the sleeve. Since I want those to line up really well and I want to reach the end where my stitch marker is placed at the same time. So where it is on the body of the sweater and where it is on the sleeve, I want to hit that at the same time. So we're just going to continue seaming down this side until we've connected it completely. And then we will pick up the other piece of the yarn and do it down the other side. So I always like to work from the center out. Okay, so I've gotten the one side of the sleeve seamed on. I'm gonna move this over and we can pick up this other half of our long tail of yarn and thread that onto the needle. And then using the same technique as I did on this side, we'll seam along this side. So going kind of like behind the stitches on the sleeve and then like in and out of the side of the sweater. Okay, so this is what it will look like once your whole sleeve is seamed on. I've kind of just left the tails because we might actually use some of this to seam up the down the sleeve and then down the side. So go ahead and seam on your second sleeve and I'll meet you back here and we'll fold our sweater in half and seam up 
the sides. So here I have my sweater folded in half and laid out. So we want to seam up our sides and our under our sleeve here. So you want to make sure that you're lining up your like underarm little spots right here together. And I like to start here and seam down the sleeve and then we're going to seam down the side, but we're not going to seam all the way. We're going to leave a little slit here. Um, because that's part of the design of the sweater. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my needle and get started, and I'll show you how I like to seam. I usually do the sleeves first. Okay, so I've started seaming. This is like my armpit area, and I'm going down my sleeve. And so I'll show you kind of how I do it. It's similar to how we did attach the sleeves to the main body. We're just kind of going through these stitches here along the side and just zigzagging back and forth. Kind of always sticking our needle from the right side to the wrong side and then back out. And this is just gonna kind of pull the edges in to each other and give us a nice looking seam. So I try to kind of put my needle in the same amount on either side so I'm getting nice consistent stitches and then just always being mindful of how the end of my sleeve is lining up, making sure that I'm not pulling one side too high. So always trying to make sure that if I'm going in this far on this side of the sweater sleeve, I'm going in that far on the other side as well. And then once we've gotten all the way down the sleeve to the cuff, we'll be done seaming the sleeve and then I'll go back to the armpit area and start seaming down the side. And like I said, we're not gonna go all the way down the side on our sweaters. We're gonna leave a little bit of a slit. Um, I like to leave about four or five inch slits on my sides, but you can always do more or less depending on how you want your sweater to fit. Alright, so now that we're done seaming, I've started picking up the stitches around the neckline in order to make our collar. So you can see here I started at a set, uh, shoulder seam um, and then I just started picking up stitches along the edge. I'm going from the front all the way around to the back and so you're going to pick up about 10 stitches down like the side front. And then you'll pick up um, the, whatever the amount of stitches that you bound off. That's how many you're going to want to pick up along like the very front of your neckline. And then again, about 10 stitches up the other side of the front neckline. And then about six stitches down the side of the back. Pick up the same amount that you bound off along the back. And then another six on the other side. So depending on what size you're making, you'll have either 108 or 116 stitches around your neckline. You can do more or you can do less depending on how tightly you want your little mock turtleneck collar to fit around your neck. So feel free to adjust it however you want it to fit. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, just make sure that if you are taking away or adding stitches that you're going to be picking up a multiple of four stitches and then you also just want to make sure that you're picking up stitches a little bit below the edge i try to go into spots that there's not like a super visible hole in the stitch um, just so that way you're not getting any gaps or holes along the bottom of your neckline 
Um, So just take your time. Try to do this as evenly as possible. This is not an exact science here. Um, You're just going to be picking up stitches around the neckline, making sure that you have a multiple of four. So continue working all the way around your neckline until you get back to where you started from. You also can go down to a smaller cord if you'd like for this. Um, I'm using the four and a half millimeter needles to pick up my stitches and work my collar. Um, I'm using the long cord that I use for the rest of the sweater and then I'm just gonna use the magic loop method. But do whatever you are most comfortable with. Okay, so I've gotten all the way back around and I've started working my two by two ribbing. I definitely wanna emphasize putting a stitch marker wherever you start. That will be the most helpful. But here you can see I've done knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And I'm just gonna continue to do that all the way around the neckline until I get back to my stitch marker. And then again, just repeat that same process around and you're gonna do it for about 20 rows of collar. Again, you can add or subtract the amount of rows you do for your collar depending on how high you want your collar to come up on your neck. But just continue working a two by two ribbing all the way around your collar until you have about 20 rows. Okay, so once you have your 20 rows of ribbing done on your collar, um, you can go ahead and bind off using your preferred method. You can do just a simple bind off. Um, for two by two ribbing, I would suggest like doing knit bind off and then purl bind off, depending on what stitch you're doing next. Um, if you want to go that route, that's totally fine. I decided to do a tubular bind off um, where you use a tapestry needle. It's going to make it a little bit stretchier. Um, I just want to make sure that I could fit this over my head and it wasn't too tight around my neck because I don't like having things super tight there. Um, so it's totally a personal preference. If you want to do the tubular bind off on the two by two rib, I do have a separate video for that. I'm not going to include it here because this video is already long enough, but I will put a link to that in the description below. So once you have finished off your collar, all you'll need to do is seam in and weave in all of your ends and then you will be ready to wear your brand new Easton pullover. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. Um, and again, you can find the full written version on my blog or as a PDF in my shop, as well as a complete kit from Lion Brand Yarn and all links to those are in the description below. Thanks so much. Have a great day and don't forget to like and subscribe.